Hello there YouTube, Devin here again. Uh, today I have a video for you on a pretty new purchase for me. It's been something on my to get list for for quite a while. Um, I'm a bit under the weather today. Uh, I think I'm just starting to get sick so you won't hear anything really too much in my voice but my stomach is just turning over and over uh, today. Um, I'm also very very warm. Uh, so today it'll be much much quieter because uh, uh, all the partying and everything has stopped with uh, everyone now graduated, so my neighbors are now much quieter. And uh, I got all my windows shut because it's actually got really, really cold, and we're about to get like three days of rain and just tons of wind and stuff, so. Um, so it's actually relatively nice in here today. As you can tell, I got my my uh, Canada 150 hoodie on, so. Um, but that's not what the video is about. The video here today is about a recent purchase I got. I'm actually really, really happy with this one. This one's kind of a run in the mill one. But I got a VZ24 here, um, which is, uh, for those of you who don't know on the channel, I really, really like mountain troops. And this is the rifle that uh, the Germans mountain troops basically used for the first um, two years of the war uh, in World War II. And this is the rifle that most of the SS uh, mountain divisions used, of which there was a few, um, because they were not allowed to use standard German uh, production rifles. They had to get their rifles produced anywhere, and since these were produced at the uh, uh, Brno factory in Czechoslovakia, they didn't count as standard German rifles, even though they took a standard German caliber. And the bolts are actually completely interchangeable because this rifle... Uh, the history behind not this specific rifle, but the model uh, VZ-24 in general, uh, started its life with Czech the newly formed Czechoslovakia becoming its own dependent nation after the fall of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and quickly trying to distance themselves from the Mannlicher style of carbines. They're basically de-Austrianizing uh, themselves. So, uh, Germany also had to pay war reparations, and one big war reparation they had to pay was they had to get rid of a whole bunch of rifles. So, um, Czechoslovakia took a whole bunch of, uh, long, uh, Gewehr 98 rifles from Germany in World War One. Uh, they used those for quite a number of years into the 20s, uh, uh, refurbishing themselves and everything like that. Um, at the Brno factory, so you could actually still buy those, a Gewehr 98, uh, oftentimes called the 20 or 22, um, which would be a Gewehr 98 that was retrofitted by Czechoslovakia. Um, so it would have started its life as a German produced 98 long rifle and it would have been um, just kind of tweaked and modified and uh, had anything replaced on it that needed to be replaced, but still basically a long Gewehr 98. And then quickly, um, Czechoslovakia jumped on the bandwagon of getting a universal short rifle. Uh, in the early 20s, they started their development, and it actually culminated in this, uh, which ended up being almost pretty much exactly the same length as a Car 98K. These are often mistaken for Car 98Ks. There's um, uh, the Brno factory even made Car 98Ks during the war after 1942. Uh, Germany, uh, who was occupying Czechoslovakia, converted the uh, Brno factory in 1942 over to producing um, G33-40 rifles and CAR 98Ks. But this is essentially a CAR 98K, just with some different features. Um, so the first being, as you can see, it does not have the German uh, stock point in them, but all the ones made under German occupation would have had the German style uh, sling attachment here, cut in the stock, that slot cut in the stock. This is an earlier produced one, so it does not have that. Um, it does have an undermount sling point here on the bottom though, and this little stud right here is for a side mounted sling point, uh, which I like having the two ver uh, two points of sling uh, points, which is really good for, for mountain troopers. You can see why they picked this rifle, because having that versatility uh, with how much equipment you have to carry helps. So the slide other, uh, so on the second barrel band here, uh, is the front undermounted sling point and the front side mounted sling point. They're on the same barrel band and they're hinged. Um, this has tangent rear sights. Um, much like uh, most German uh, rifles would uh, after the Langevisier sights 
Um, this is more reminiscent of the Car 98 AZ from World War I though, uh, which heavily influenced this rifle, and this rifle heavily influenced in turn the Car 98K. So, but what we have here uh, for this one is a early Romanian contract VZ-24. Uh, this was the standard uh, rifle of the Czech army and the Romanian army during World War II. Both were uh, participants in World War II. Um, the only difference between this and a Car 98K uh, as far as uh, the sling points and, and the fact that the bolt is not turned down on this rifle is the fact that the handguard is extended a little further and the front side hood, as you can see there, is a little different. Uh, so that's it though, mostly aesthetic things. Uh, I do like the um, straight bolt handle a little better. The Mountain Troops also really liked the uh, straight bolt handle because it's a lot easier to use with gloved hands um, and in the cold, okay? Now another good thing about the straight bolt handle that a lot of people don't know um, so yes, a lot of people who are speed shooters who think that that's, you know, cool and everything, which is, there's plenty of you out there, and I understand your logic behind speed shooting. Um, but the turn down bolt handle puts your finger right by the trigger when you're done. When you're done cycling the action, your finger's right here by the trigger. I like having, uh, especially coming from the cold weather and studying mountain troopers and everything very, very much, so they liked these a lot because if the action froze up, because you need to clean your rifle and keep it lubed in order for it to work, if the action froze up at all, the bolt handle sticking out this far allowed you to just smash it on a rock or something or on a piece of wood or equipment and you could pry the bolt open a lot easier than trying to get underneath that uh, turn down bolt handle. So you could smash it open if it froze, froze shut or anything like that, or if it was just really well fouled you could still get this rifle to open a lot easier by the fact that the bolt handle sticks out this far. It's a lot easier to catch it on something to smash it open. Um, this one has a fully uh, solid wood stock too. They're not laminate like most of the Car 98Ks. Um, but other than that, they're the same length. They fire the same cartridge. So now I will show you the cartridge here. Um, I don't have any FMJ Mauser uh, rounds because my gun store was out when I bought this, so I had to buy soft points. But this is a... 8mm Mauser, which is kind of weird because it's actually 7.92 by 57, and this is a Mosin Nagant round, uh, just standard Tula FMJ steel case. So as you can see, if we put them, put them together rim to rim here, all right, the Mosin Nagant round is a little bit taller, okay? Now, the case is a little bit shorter on the Mosin Nagant round. The Mosin Nagant has a, has a longer bullet, um, but a shorter case whereas the Mauser round is going to have a shorter bullet but a longer case, so it's going to move a little faster. The bullet on the 8mm Mauser, though, does weigh more than the 30 caliber bullet on, or 7.62 caliber bullet, uh, on the Mosin Nagant. So, but they're basically, ballistically, pretty much the same. Um, one small detail, though, too, the 8mm Mauser is a rimless cartridge, whereas the Mosin Nagant, uh, 1891 cartridge is rimmed. Mm -hmm. So it basically comes down to preference. These will not, uh, the Mauser will not rim jam or anything like that. Um, so some features of this rifle, other than the tangent sights, which are adjustable up to 2,000 meters, the ambidextrous swings levels and everything like that, it will take a standard bayonet, uh, German style bayonet, cleaning rod uh, slash stacking rod, uh, which comes in uh, a little like third length partition. And so you would get together with two buddies and you would screw them together and you would have a full length cleaning rod to clean your rifle. Other than that, um, it was basically a stacking rod. So if you had to hook your uh, rifles together and to keep them, uh, the muzzles out of the mud, uh, you certainly could. This rifle, uh, why I bought it particularly is because it's in okay condition. It's in like shooter's grade condition. Um, but it survived a lot of the refurb processes that you see a lot of these go through. This particular rifle, um, is entirely matching except for the bolt, which isn't uncommon. A lot of the VC-24s, when they were captured uh, by the Russians, would uh, they would have pulled the bolts out of them and thrown those in one pile and thrown the rest of the rifle in another. Uh, so that if there was a major push forward or something like that, they were all separate. They couldn't just throw the bolts back into them and start using them. Uh, the Germans or the Romanians, who were German allies, couldn't, couldn't really do that. Um, so they did that, and then when they went to, after the countries became Soviet bloc countries, and they started giving them all back, 
uh, they would just throw a bolt into a rifle because the machining process is pretty much the same and the rifle will work with a bolt that isn't matched and it's not going to affect it too much. You're going to be hard pressed to find one with a matching bolt to the rifle. It's much more common to find them with non-matching bolts. But this rifle is all matching. It is a DR399 serial number. Oh, so the R means that it would have been a Romanian contract gun. Uh, the stock and upper handguard are all matching. They are DR399. You can see there uh, a little relief cut there in the wood. Uh, it's, an, it's entirely matching, this rifle is, except for the bolt, um, which is good. You don't really see them that way. The uh, the barrel on this uh, has been counterbored, and what that means is after a while, uh, one of the high, uh, high stress points on rifling is actually right up here near the muzzle. So if you're shooting this rifle a lot, if the rifle's been used a lot, the rifling will start to wear out right here on the end of the muzzle, and it'll affect the pressure changes on the bullet, which will cause your, scent, uh, your point of aim to veer off. Uh, and be kind of sporadic. So you see a lot of these, they'll be counterboard, which means they basically just uh, board the barrel out for an inch uh, or so, uh, where there isn't going to be any rifling and it's going to be much uh, wider. So I'll, I'll show you that when uh, you put the round here, it takes it all the way to the shoulder of the round and that's because this, uh, and it's still loose, because this rifle has been counterboard uh, to make sure it stays accurate. Um, whereas if you look at, uh, I don't know if I did it in my Mosin Nagant video. When you when you want a round, what you want to do, uh, if the rifling is in good shape of a rifle, when you put the bullet in, you want it to go to about halfway up the bullet. Okay, That means the rifling's in good tact. But the rifling in this rifle is actually very crisp and dark and clean and very good, but it has been counterboard, so the last about inch, uh, inch and a quarter, uh, or like 20, 22 millimeters of this barrel will have been... Um, uh, sorry, not 22, probably more like 25 millimeters of this barrel have been reamed out uh, and the rifling is now not visible in that last inch uh, just to allow there to be an even pressure differential on the bullet. So that's not uncommon to find with these as well. So uh, I'm super, super glad to have this rifle. I got a pretty good deal on it. I think I got it for like 400 bucks all said and done, shipped. Um, and for an all matching one that survived a lot of the refurb processes, this is actually a fairly good deal. Uh, history wise um, so weird thing is though is this whole rifle is Romanian contract except for the bolt the bolt has been scrubbed but it <laughs> this is actually a Japanese contract bolt which is kind of rare to find um, so after looking up kind of the markings and stuff on it this is a Japanese contract bolt the Japanese did buy some of these for testing and everything like that during uh, kind of the pre-World War II uh, era. These were used by a lot of countries. This is actually one of the most widespread Mauser uh, type rifles in the world for how many countries adopted them and they're very well made. So a uh, very very cool piece of history to have and a lot of countries use these which is another reason why I wanted one outside of the fact that uh, mountain troops use them is that a lot of countries use these. Um, if you're interested uh, in this video uh, I can do just like I did on the Mosin Nagant, and I can take this all apart and show you what to look for. I know that this one does have some work. It needs to be done uh, underneath the wood and stuff like that. There's some surface rust and everything. Um, but if you guys would like to see that, I would be more than happy to show you. Um, other than that, uh, I think that just about wraps up the history of the VZ-24 Mauser rifle, of which I just acquired and I'm super happy to have. And I hope you guys like this video and you like to learn this type of stuff. Uh, I'm very, very glad to, uh, happy to show this to you. Uh, it's not something you get to see every day. Um, and most people just shoot these guns on the internet and everything like that, which I'm sure a lot of you guys would like to see. Um, but the history behind them is something that needs to be appreciated too. The history and the machinery and all that other good stuff. So, and I hope you guys enjoy that. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.